Hi, I'm Mike Meyer from Mike Meyer Inc. and I'm here to talk about our Mod 1 coilover kit. So here we go. We're going to answer some questions today, commonly asked scenarios of, hey, why do you do this? Why do you do that? So here we are. It's going to be a little bit of a video, but hopefully you learn something from it. All right. <clears throat> First thing is, we're going to talk about our coilover kit. We mount our coilover kit off the upper arm. We use a JRI shock. We use a high-end, low-friction ball joint, a pretty cool billet top mount, and I'm going to explain to you why we do that. So the first thing is we have a couple of components here that make up a suspension system. Number one is geometry. Number two is quality of the shock, how well it responds. Our shaft kit, the pivot assemblies, the ball joint, part of the pivot assemblies, time and development. All right, so the first thing is geometry. Geometry. If you can see here in my little picture, you can check out more of an original system here where you have an upper control arm, a shock, a spring on the spring saddle. <clears throat> it's roughly 56% motion ratio. What that means is when the ball joint or wheel moves up one inch, this will move just a tick over a half inch. Okay, so now what that means is the wheel moves almost two to one to this shock and spring. With this new system here, our suspension is roughly 75% motion ratio. That means that if the wheel moves up one inch, the shock and spring move about three quarters of an inch. Now, why would you want this? What does this mean to you? What happens is the shock and spring have a really hard time controlling the car, keeping it flat, when it only moves half as much as the wheel. We want this shock and spring to move as much, as close to one-to-one -one as we can. And that becomes really difficult with packaging and components, but we can get close to it. And the closer this shock and spring gets to the upper control arm, what ends up happening is the work on that shock and spring becomes less and less. Now what we do is we can run a softer spring, a softer shock package, improve ride quality for the street guys, but keep that handling in the control because the wheel isn't moving so much further than the suspension, the shock and spring. So now what happens when you make a turn, the shock is right there involved in the scenario out of the gate versus how the car has to lean a bit. Then the shock and spring starts coming into play, you know, a few moments later. So we want to move it up 75% right around that window. That's a really good place. It really gains control. A lot of systems are like that out there. And the other thing that we get is let's talk about shaft kits and ball joints and things like that with the old school stuff we did a lot of spring saddle components roller spring saddles ford did it in the falcons and you free up the movement of the pivoting assembly the old shaft kits were a steel on steel shaft kit here our new one we do not use a bearing or we don't use a steel and steel anymore we use a delrin bushing in the shaft kit what this does this allows the delrin bushing to wear fluidly and smoothly. But the other thing is there are loads on this and it doesn't continuously spin. So we want this control arm to have a broad wearable surface area and a bearing gives you these little needle point mounting points where just a little needle point will just rock back and forth on its race and it'll, it'll actually rotate a divot into the race and then destroy itself. So what we ended up doing was doing a broad hard bushing has a lot of wearable surface area and it's really free moving. The next thing we do is the ball joint. We've had cars come in after alignments where it has four and a half, five, six degrees of caster. You turn it in, you let the wheel go and it doesn't go back to center. Of course, it's a steering box or it's this or it's that. It ultimately turned out the ball joints. The ball joints had so much stiction in it. When you turned, you let go, it won't come back to center. You put a new ball joint, a good ball joint in, you turn, you let go of the wheel, right back to center. So ball joint quality is massively important. With the old systems here, you're just lucky to get a ball joint nowadays with that car 50 years old. The option of having multiple different qualities of ball joints, the new, uh, the new coatings, all the new manufacturing processes, they're not putting that money into this old stuff anymore. So. We adjusted to a new, more current screw-in ball joint where you've got all sorts of options. You can buy ball joints with removable studs, 
You can buy just low friction ball joints. You can buy just a good old mood ball joint. But for your long life and wearability, that is key. So combined with a nice fluid shaft kit, combined with a low friction ball joint, the ride quality actually gets a lot better. Now the next thing is, let's see here. So we got ball joints, we got shaft kits. Quality of shock. We're gonna jump on that one for a quick second. The old school shocks, a lot of them were twin tubes. And what that means is, we'll draw a little picture here. That means you have a shock body, and then the shaft comes up, and there's actually another tube inside with a little piston inside here, connected to the shaft. Okay, so that little piston in there doesn't move much fluid very quickly. Control is how much fluid is moved inside that shock as fast as you can. I mean, so you need that shock to be able to respond quickly. And the only way, what everybody's doing nowadays, the good quality stuff is, we don't use many twin tubes anymore because they don't move enough fluid soon enough. We go to a mono tube design. And what that is, is we have a piston, the full diameter, the full diameter of the body of the shock. This piston moves a ton of fluid really fast, which gives you control right now. That means we don't have to over stiffen it. Street guys, all these guys crews and weekend warriors, they get control without the stiffness. That's how these new cars are doing. You gotta use a great quality shock. That's why we use a JRI. It's the best shock. It's there's nothing better. The next thing is, I'll make it quick for you guys here. Time and development. People ask us all the time, they say, hey man, you're a racer, I don't, don't wanna race. Hey, if we didn't learn about the shock, if we didn't get that car to respond quickly, if we didn't try to get that suspension free, we wouldn't have learned, man, this car is riding better and better, and it's our race car. All of a sudden, we're starting to discover all these attributes, the way the shocks are developed inside, the motion ratios, on the track, and that's what allows us to take it to the street guy and make their car set up and handle these bumps, manhole covers, ruts in the road, with quality and control. So when you buy our coilover kit, our time and development on the track is we equate out the quality on the street. And that's why we can get geometry, we can get shock quality, we can get quality pivot assemblies, we can get a user-friendly system in the upper half. This means that you don't have to buy the entire thing. Get quality, you don't have to spend all the money, you just spend it once, buy a quality mod coilover kit, and that's what you're gonna wanna do. So stay tuned, look at our new videos coming soon, and thanks so much for listening.